Okay, folks, welcome to F5E Realism Stuff Part 3. This is my discussion on BFM, both similar and dissimilar, using the A4E as the dissimilar target. Okay, this is the uh, F5E BFM configuration chart that looks complicated, but is actually simple. The green box here illustrates the configuration, uh, drag index, and weight that we're going to be using for today's videos for the F5. Uh, the rest of this data down here is just I wanted you to get a feel for what a drag index means with various different configurations of the F5. I got the drag index by going into the chart, digging out the numbers, adding them up, and applying them. I did a similar thing with weights, although there's not a whole lot of extra equipment on this configuration. I came up with a takeoff gross weight, and then I arbitrarily uh, subtracted 2,000 pounds for a combat weight. Okay, folks, uh, on this chart we have a, uh, an acceleration comparison and another graph, which I'll talk about uh, at the end here. But um, the comparison is a, a level flight, low altitude acceleration comparison in both mil and max. It applies to all F5Es from sea level to 5,000 feet, and the acceleration itself is from 0.5 to 0.85 Mach. We have two weight uh, classes here for this acceleration test. One is a relative heavy weight, and the other is a relative light weight. The data we collected includes fuel use, distance required, and time needed. Uh, notice uh, right off the bat that the acceleration in both mil and max is about the same. So uh, especially at the uh, relative heavy weight, it's about 170 pounds to make that acceleration. And it's about 155 to 160, so just about the same for the lightweight uh, acceleration. And that's because uh, there's a big difference in, in the distance required for each and the time required for each. And you, you can see that here. Uh, on average, it takes about seven miles to make that acceleration in mil and about two and a half miles in max to make that same acceleration. And the time is about uh, nearly a minute in mil and less than half a minute in uh, max. So if you're going to accelerate, you want to do it in max. Um, what you don't want to do is a level acceleration as uh, we, we did for this diagram. And that's because uh, even at 1G, you're producing lift. And of course, lift produces induced drag. And you want to minimize induced drag. So you don't want negative lift. You don't want positive lift. You want um, zero lift if you can. And so you want to bump the nose forward to get to zero G to minimize induced drag. Um, so if you need to accelerate, uh, the thing to do is to go to max burner and go to uh, a little bit of bunt forward on your stick to get to zero G. Okay, this uh, um, additional graph over here is just the auto flap uh, shift schedule. And I've compared it to the typical box that the F5 is going to fight in for the videos that I produced. Uh, that's below 20,000, above sea level, of course. Uh, maybe greater than uh, 250, although occasionally we get below that, and below uh, 450, typically. And it just shows you that uh, one of the shifts take place at 330 knots, and it, which bisects uh, this particular graph. If you get really slow, less than 200, it'll shift again down here. But the, the primary shift that you're going to be dealing with most of the time is the one at 330 knots. OK, this graph shows a, a couple of more comparisons. On the left side, we've got a uh, fuel comparison in mil and max, similar to the previous graph. But in this case, it's uh, for the both. Both are for the same amount of time. And it just shows you that, of course, you're using uh, more gas when you're in burner. And uh, it turns out it's about three times as much fuel in burner as you would be using if you were uh, doing the same maneuver for the same time in military thrust. Um, it also points out that there's a time limitation in burner of 15 minutes and a time limitation in mill of 30 minutes. Um, you can take a look at the, the data down here to, to verify what I just said. But essentially, if, you're, if you don't need to be in maximum thrust, then you should be in mill. 
uh, or something less. For example, if you're trying to decelerate, you may want to be at idle throttle. Okay, uh, uh, I, I guess the thing to remember about all this is if one way to win the fight is to run your opponent out of gas, uh, and of course the same applies to him. He can run you out of gas if you're spending too much time in burner, at least time that you don't need to be. Okay, uh, the second comparison is between is the turn performance between 0.6 Mach and 0.9 Mach. Um, and I want to point out first in the two graphs, there's this horizontal line that is the dividing line between having excess power and having negative power. And the, the red box, uh, if you're fighting in the red box, you're exchanging um, altitude for airspeed or vice versa. Um, uh, now, uh, what, are, what does all this mean? This line here is, is 20,000 feet. This is sea level, 20,000 feet, sea level. Uh, these are G's, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 G's, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 G's over here. Uh, this is turn rate, 6, 8, 12, or 20 degrees per second of a turn rate. And when you're losing power, it's uh, 100 feet per second. So this is minus 200 feet per second, minus 400 feet per second, minus 1,000 feet per second in order to generate enough turn to get that 20 degree turn rate um, and it's uh, and out to 7 G's. So if you're turning down here, you're either losing energy, airspeed or altitude or exchanging one for the other. Uh, if you're up here, this is uh, more of the two circle fight where you are um, uh, at least sustaining your, uh, your airspeed and altitude. And so you can see that uh, it takes place between about three and about four and a half G's if you are at 0.6 Mach, and from three to about six G's if you're at 0.9 Mach. Uh, and notice if you're at 20,000 feet, it's a very small window. If you're at sea level, it's much larger. And the same is true at 0.9 Mach. Neither one of these graphs really talks about turn radius, and we'll get to that on the next slide. Okay, this is uh, the FIV turn performance chart at three different altitudes, 5, 15, and 30,000 feet. The main takeaway is that the airplane fights pretty terribly at high altitude and much better at low altitude. It does okay at uh, medium altitude. Um, turn rate uh, on vertical. Indicated Mach number or airspeed on the horizontal, turn radius and load factor, and the sustained turn rate is this arc here. If you study this graph, it'll help you during your fight. But just remember, fighting at low altitude is where you're probably going to end up, and you want to kind of maintain a corner airspeed somewhere between 340 and about 360. Okay, this is a similar chart, not the same for the A4E. It's at two different altitudes, sea level and 10,000 feet. And I'm not going to say a whole lot about this because I'm not sure these graphs compare all that much to the other one. But for today's videos, the BFM drag index we're going to use on the A4 is 37. And the combat uh, weight is going to be 10,000 pounds, roughly. Um, the vertical axis on this chart is normal load factor times gross weight. So one G at 10,000 feet is down here, or 10,000 pounds is here. Um, uh, two Gs would be 20,000, three Gs, 30,000 feet. These are equal lines of load uh, of drag index, so it, which would uh, produce zero longitudinal acceleration. So you're not decelerating, you're not accelerating. And since we're 37, our arc is kind of in here somewhere like this, lines of equivalent. This is our corner speed uh, of about 325 or so. And in the A4, which is corner speeds range from about 
290 to about 325. 325 being the ideal if you can maintain it. Now, just because this arc comes all the way up to the drag index, you can you can get over 5 Gs, but you're probably not going to be maintaining altitude. You're going to be exchanging altitude for airspeed in order to maintain this airspeed uh, while pulling this amount of Gs. So it, it tells you you can do it. It just uh, it may not be what you want to do. But uh, uh, you can uh, pause the video to take a good look at these charts if you like. Uh, this little uh, uh, diagram uh, kind of shows you a, a turning radius for a particular bank angle and airspeed. And, I, and for this case, I've used 75 degrees of bank and 325 for our corner speed, which produces a turn radius around 2,200 feet for the A4. A, this is just a uh, similar fight comparison, plus or minuses for a one circle and a two circle fight. For the one circle fight, um, as it says here, you typically stay within the minimum range of your opponent's missile, and meaning that you he can't shoot you with it as long as you are close aboard. Um, this can be a quick fight. In fact, that's kind of the intention. Anyone who goes one circle realizes that uh, their intention is to get slower, faster than his opponent, and to develop angles and uh, get in a shooting position as quickly as possible. It's a little easier to maintain, maintain sight, um, but do you, at the cost of losing um, SA to the surrounding area to any other third-party people, like, for example, your opponent's wingman. Uh, and it gets ugly quickly as a result. Um, it's also much more difficult to escape from a one-circle fight that's decelerating all the time. Now, for the two-circle fight, uh, it tends to conserve energy, kind of the definition of a two-circle fight. Uh, you can maintain a little better SA, uh, and I caveat that with the uh, point six here, which uh, it's much easier to lose sight. Uh, you can be up to three miles or so apart at the extreme edges of this, and with any environmental conditions, you could very easily lose sight. And of course, uh, losing sight is is uh, comparable to losing the fight. Um, it's also a little easier to exit this fight uh, if you uh, if you need to. Uh, and it, uh, you also flirt with the minimum missile range of your opponent's uh, um, heaters. So uh, things to keep in mind. Okay, this is the same comparison for the dissimilar fight. Um, a lot of these things are pretty much the same. I won't mention them again. I'll just sort of highlight the differences. Um, the A4 having a smaller diameter turn uh, even at corner speed, can develop a few angles on his opponent, the F5. Um, in the two-circle fight, uh, even though his circle is smaller, his rate is slower, and so the advantage of being slower is not necessarily um, evident at that second merge when they come around. It's quite likely going to be 180 degrees out, everything else being equal. Um, fights with the, uh, this generation of fighter tend to migrate or evolve from, uh, let's just say if it starts out as a, as a two-circle fight, will devolve into a one-circle fight and then eventually into a um, rolling scissors and maybe even a flat scissors, uh, which uh, becomes a fairly dangerous fight. The A4 is... Uh, Potentially a little better at flying slow than the F5E. Uh, the F5E uh, has that burner, can maybe get out of a few situations that the A4 can't, especially when uh, if the uh, intention is to get away from the fight. Uh, the A4 really doesn't have an out, basically has to stay to the end, so either kills his opponent or he outlasts them, and that is possible. The F5E has two things going against it. It has a burner, so it's going through its its gas at a at a higher clip, and the A4E's uh, internal fuel supply is larger than the F5E's, assuming they started out the same, which in the videos they will. 
Okay, I produced this graph to illustrate the difference between having turning room and not having turning room. The illustration on the left is a merge with very little or no turning room available. The illustration on the right is a graph where there is lots of turning room available. Uh, turning room is serious stuff uh, to the point where if you uh, give it up and you don't realize it, your opponent's going to win the fight. It's that serious. So always be aware of what turning room is available every time you merge or any time you are in the fight. It doesn't always have to be at a merge. If there's turning room available and, and uh, your opponent uses it, then you're going to be at a disadvantage. So it's serious shit. Okay, some things to keep in mind while watching the following BFM engagements. Uh, first, your opponent's 399. Know where it is relative to where you are now. Have a running self-assessment of whether or not you are offensive or defensive. Always be cognizant of your airspeed. Are you, where are you in relation to your corner airspeed? Um, be aware of your opponent's uh, current airspeed and whether or not he is at his corner speed or not nose position is is also vitally important yeah, really two different situations one where you are in sort of a love berry or tail chase situation <clears throat> is the is your opponent's nose <clears throat> excuse me in a lead lag or is his nose actually on you remember that in order for him to employ his weapons he has to have his nose at least on you if it's the missile because he needs that to get a lock, and uh, and then he has to be outside the minimum missile range in order to be able to actually pull the trigger. So um, be aware of his nose position in a Luffberry tail chase situation. Also in a slower fight where you're in a rolling scissors or a flat scissors, is his nose higher than yours or is your nose higher than his? If your nose is higher than his, you are decelerating faster than him and maybe that's going to uh, put you in a more advantageous position. So nose position high or low in a slow fight is important. Obviously, we talked about range. Uh, be aware of that missile range at all times and his nose position. Okay, plane of movement. If you're offensive, you want to be in plane as a general rule. And when you're defensive, you want to be thinking about out of, out of plane maneuvering, especially for gun defense and to some extent missile defense. Um, Victor or a lift vector placement is, is something that's critical all the time during the fight. You never want to put your lift vector where it shouldn't be, meaning that you always have to do it very deliberately. Are you are you pulling towards his six o'clock? Are you pulling to put yourself out in front of him? Are you pulling to catch up? What are you doing? Be specific, be intentional, be deliberate. It's important. Turning room. Another critical thing in the fight, always be aware if it's available or if it's not. If you don't, uh, if you uh, aren't aware of turning room that is available, your opponent's going to use it and you're going to end up losing the fight. It's that critical. Turning room is a really big deal. So pay attention to that. Um, always have a bug out plan. Um, obviously, the direction is important because you don't want to have to once you ex escape from the fight, you don't want to have to come back through the fighter in order to get to home home plate. So direction is important. Uh, obviously, getting away from the fight is also important. Um, if you uh, have to go in a wrong direction, you have to do it. But obviously, direction uh, is kind of uh, an important thing. Speed, always fast. Try to get away because you have to get outside that maximum missile range. Flares management is sort of a sub-program here. Uh, you've been fighting for some amount of time, and you've probably used some flares. Uh, if you have, how many do you have left? Always try to keep some um, left for a an escape if you need it, um, because those flares may be uh, what you need in order to get beyond that, uh, that uh, maximum missile range. Obviously, when? When do you want to bug? Uh, anytime during the fight, it uh, could be... Uh, the answer, but some things uh, make it sort of mandatory. You're running low on fuel 
is uh, obviously the most obvious, but also if you're out of weapons, if you're out of flares, it's probably too late. If you're getting low on fares, flares, those kinds of things are the considerations. And of course, when it also pertains to when during the actual maneuvering, the best time would be high speed merge close aboard no turning room available so that he has to turn 180 degrees in order to to get his nose on you which gives you maximum amount of time to accelerate and get beyond his maximum missile range in a dissimilar fight if you're the a4 you really don't have a, a really good option for bugging out the good news for the a4 is that the a4 has a larger internal fuel supply and he doesn't have a burner so um, he can out. He typically can outlast the F5, uh, given uh, all things being equal. And then the BFM videos that you're going to see both start out with a full internal fuel load. So fuel states are also important, as we talked about. Know where your bingo fuel is, and and so when you have to leave the fight, and make your uh, bug out plan accordingly. Uh, also estimate your opponent's fuel state and their bingo requirements. Uh, running out of fuel, as I mentioned before, is tantamount to a kill. Uh, so either for you or for your uh, opponent. Oh my god, I hit a freaking power line. Whoa. Okay, this is a uh, 1v1 F5 similar nose high one circle fight. The uh, op opposition fighter or the one in the distance is always going to be at the center of the screen. That's how this view works. Looks like the white fighter is turning harder, trying to, to build a little bit of turning room. And his reversal is him trying to claim that uh, advantage. And it looks like the fight develops into a vertical spiral with the white fighter having um, a bit of an advantage here because he's higher which gives him the opportunity for some snapshots, which he takes. And notice that the uh, white fighter's lift vector is uh, always trying to get behind a 3-9 line and, uh, and then reversing to try to stay in plane with the uh, green fighter. And uh, the white fighter is continuing to do that. Probably now looking for maybe a missile shot opportunity, slowing up a little bit faster than the green fighter. Green fighter realizes that and uh, puts out a few flares, but the white fighter is still looking. Probably too much of a crossing angle, but uh, but then the green fighter flies out in front and loses the fight. Okay, same fight, uh, green fighter perspective, going nose high one circle, and he th it looks like maybe he's thinking he's going to get some turning room uh, vertically, but that doesn't happen. White fighter counteracts it, not pulling quite hard enough to uh, prevent turning room from developing, and then drops his nose giving the uh, white fighter some vertical advantage here. but uh, And his lift vector is pretty much either out in front or maybe at the other fighter, which puts him out in front of the uh, opposing fighter. Now it looks like his lift vector is trying to get behind him, reversing in front of the white fighter's front um, uh, 3-9 line, which just looks like he's trying to do some out-of-plane maneuvering to stay away from those snapshots. As they approach the ground, he realizes he's going to have to level off here. Uh, and so he's uh, maybe now worried about defending against a missile, so he's putting out some flares. 
And he's probably watching. Yeah, he's watching for that. But then uh, it flies out in front and loses the fight. Okay, this is fight number two. Again, uh, 1v1, similar, one circle. Looks like uh, the opposing fighter's going low and uh, the white fighter's going high. And again, the uh, opposing fighter is always going to be at the center of the screen. And it looks like it's turning into a two circle now. There was a little bit of uh, turning room developed by the white fire fighter that. Uh, was taken advantage of. Notice his uh, vector is behind, initially behind the uh, green fighter. And again, the two circle continues. Watch the uh, lift vector of the white fighter out behind the green fighter, at least until the green fighter starts coming back for the uh, follow on merge. And then the white fighter tries to align the fuselages. <coughs> Getting close to the ground now. It looks like the uh, white fighter is uh, well within his range for shooting a missile. And for some reason is maybe having trouble getting a tone. Or and now he's getting pretty slow. He's down to almost 128 knots. So he didn't have much control over his nose. And obviously probably no lock before the missile was fired by the time he pushed the button. And he got well below 100 knots there and he's just kind of falling. But fortunately he's uh, got his nose again on the fighter. But again, too much crossing. Really uh, could have hit the button accidentally. Uh, look where his, vec ve his vector now is kind of on the green fighter. It started again initially. Again, there it is behind the green fighter just to make sure that he doesn't fly out in front of the green fighter. And now he's just trying to align fuselages. Kind of a wasted shot there. Now the white fighter has expended both his missiles so he knows he's got to get close enough for gun. And I have to assume that the green fighter also knows that he is uh, fighting a fighter without missiles which is why he's uh, kind of doing what he's doing. Although now he should be doing some out of plane maneuvering. White fighter is trying to develop some lead. And uh, I guess that's kind of what he's trying to do there. And again, the uh, white fighter is just trying to stay in plane. Uh, he kind of... Um, maneuvered so that the white fighter is now kind of a little bit out in front of him. Probably should have kept on pulling, but uh, the white fighter now is just putting edge on to minimize the chance of getting hit. And it uh, looks like he may have lost sight a little bit here. He's kind of looking for his opponent. Not sure he found him. But uh, the green fighter definitely has the advantage now. Taken a little bit more than a snapshot. That's uh, he pulled lead on him, and now he's kind of in a white fighter's in a hurt locker, <coughs> trying to do a little bit of out of plane maneuvering here to to uh, get away. And now it looks like he's trying to do a vertical maneuver, but his nose is falling off in front of the green fighter, and that's not good. He basically flew out in front, so he's uh yep. Lost the fight. Okay, this is the uh, same fight from the green fighter's perspective. The green fighter initially goes low. He sees the white fighter pulling high in this one circle fight. And so he attempts to close the distance uh, to minimize the turning room he gives up doesn't quite make it all the way up there and the white fighter is, is able to take advantage of some of that turning room. Now look at where his lift vector is. It's out in front of the white fighter. So there's no surprise where he's going to end up. 
Yep, he ends up right in front of the white fighter. Even though he, uh, he, uh, now, he's got his nose up pretty good. If he just kept it coming around here without dropping the nose, then he drops it. And he stays out in front of that white fighter. And, of course, his lip vector is out in front. And for some reason, the uh, white fighter isn't able to get a missile off here. Maybe he's struggling to get his nose on the green fighter. And it looks like there's uh, a little bit of uh, stuttering here in the program. So it could be that he was just having trouble getting his nose on the green fighter. Sees the missile coming off the rails, puts a few flares out there, and the missile goes haywire. So either a combination of just uh, not a valid block by the white fighter and maybe good use of flares by the green fighter. Now the second missile comes off probably right about now. There it is going down almost right straight into the ground. Yep, right there. Okay, now the green fighter knows that the white fighter is uh, bereft of missiles. And looks like maybe some out of plane maneuvering to try to uh, stay away from the white fighter's gun. He knows the white fighter's got his nose on him. So he's doing uh, a number of things to try to stay unpredictable. Now he's just trying to make a uh, good distance between him and the uh, white fighter. Pulling up, looking at the uh, distance, knowing that the white fighter doesn't have a good shot yet, but he will shortly. And he's just trying to pull out. Yep. Trying to go out of plane here. White fighter easily stays in plane. Can I get a snapshot off there? And there it is for sure. Another out of plane maneuver. White fighter counters it very easily. And now he generates uh, the overshoot. Good pull to underneath the white fighter. Reverses it to try to take advantage of it. And notice where the lift vector was. Initially it was behind the white fighter. Now he's just trying to pull up to try to get his nose on the white fighter that flew out in front of him. And he's able to do it. And he gets a uh, shot off, but uh, no hits, unfortunately, for him at the time. Now he's uh, very slow. He's well below, two, or, uh, below 100 knots now. But he's directly on top of the white fighter, so he's kind of got uh, control here. And he can roll very easily and stay in plane with the white fighter. Get a snapshot off. Actually, a pretty that was a pretty good sustained shot. Uh, and now the white fighter is uh, trying to do a couple of out of plane maneuvers here, just by rolling off and then rolling back, trying to get ahead of the green fighter's nose. And he his last effort here is to try to do it vertically, which starts out good, but then he allows his nose to fall off to the left, which takes him right out in front of the green fighter, and. Uh, the inevitable happens. Loses the fight. Okay, this is the third fight. And this is going to be two circle with the uh, green fighter going vertically down. Definitely a two circle fight though. Now the white fighter is going to turn harder. He's got gravity assist here to try to take advantage of some turning room. The green fighter is having to pull against gravity and so he gets uh, eh, did a pretty good job of nullifying the turning room. Uh, they're uh, somewhat equivalent here but look where his vector is. It's out in front. The white uh, fighter had his vector behind the green fighter and so ended up with the uh, winning the race for the turning room. And uh, almost missed a snapshot opportunity there. Uh, trying to stay out of plane. Doing a pretty good job of staying out of plane. White fighter um, fairly easily. Now he's got his vector out in front of the green fighter. And so closes the, the distance, but uh, 
a little bit of a, almost a, a bear roll attack there to try to a, kind of a displacement roll. And it worked out pretty good. Got a good snapshot off. Um, Green Fighter uh, kind of got it into a, kind of a scissors here now. Looks like uh, the beginnings of a flat scissors. Although it looks like the uh, white fighter decided he didn't want to be in a scissors with uh, another fighter. And so he's taking this into a two circle fight to the left. And I'm sure at this point he's uh, trying to get a speed up to uh, corner. And he's just about there now. He's almost at 340. And he's watching the nose of his opponent across the circle. And it looks like the beginnings of a Luffberry here. Which is essentially a two-circle fight. Level. And this could go on for, uh, for a good bit of time. So for two fighters with a uh, um, limited supply of uh, fuel... And they're both probably in burner, or close to it. Uh, I'm sure they're both in burner at this point. They're going through their gas pretty quickly. Now, the question is, who's going to fly a better two-circle fight? And it looks, at this point, like the uh, white fighter is working his way around the circle to get behind the green fighter. It's kind of hard to tell, but it kind of looks like it. And right now... He's up around 350, 340, so he's maintaining corner speed pretty well. And it doesn't look like he's gaining much, which means that the uh, green fighter is probably pretty close to, to uh, um, corner speed as well. Now, it looks like he's using, well, no, he's still at corner speed, so maybe the uh, green fighter slowed up a little bit. But now he's using a little bit of that uh, that airspeed. Uh, he's still at 350. So something that the green fighter did allowed uh, the white fighter to get some angles. And now the uh, green fighter is having to, looks like, extend a little bit to get the airspeed back. Long Luffberry here. These are hard to get out of. Now, it looks like the white fighter is expending some of that. He's down to about, uh, well, he's still a 340. So I'm not sure what the green fighter's doing here, but he's going to be in the chance to get one shot off. Not much of it. Green fighter reverses into trying to get the uh, white fighter to fly out in front of him, but the white fighter pulls harder towards the uh, green six and wins the race. He's both vertically and uh, he's in a much better position than the green fighter who never came up to take out that, that turning room. So the white fighter has all kinds of turning room now. Uh, probably going to shoot a missile, a missile. The uh, green fighter is obviously aware that he's dumping flares. And it looks like it. Ooh, good use of flares. First missile was wasted. Uh, came close. Looks like maybe he got something there. Tad bit. It's either just smoke or something. Oh, he ended up flying out in front of the green fighter. We'll see how that works out for the white fighter. A reversal in front of the greens. 3-9 line. Not good. Bad maneuver, I think. Ooh, got hit on the nose. He's lucky there. He's lucky he didn't lose this fight right there. Okay, uh... Trying to, look, he's in plane now, but he's watching the uh, the green fighter's nose. He knows that uh, he's probably inside the minimum range, and if the uh, it looks like the green fighter is going to have to extend in order to get airspeed back again, the uh, white fighter is uh, just past uh, above 300. Now he's about 320, and it looks like the green fighter is trying to cut the circle here. And he may, he may try to get a missile off. Nope. He had to dump his nose because he was expending too much energy. Looks like the white fighter's down around 310. Speed, and now he's trying to get his, you know, release the G a little bit, relax the G a little bit in order to get knots again. And now he's back to corner speed. He's about 340. And it looks like the green fighter's trying to get back to, to corner speed as well. 
At the moment, the uh, white fighter can raid around a little better. He's up around 360 now. He's raiding around. Green fighter's trying to cut across again, so he's expending. Uh, he's turning airspeed into angles. Now, here comes the, uh, let's see if he learned from the last time. Now, look, this is a nice, purely vertical maneuver, always pulling towards the uh, green fighter 6 o'clock, and he puts himself in a much better position here behind the uh, green fighter 6 o'clock. But the green fighter is pulling hard to get back, and we'll see how that works. Uh, his uh, vector's out in front of the green fighter, trying to close the distance. But uh, <sighs> anyway, oh, he uh, reversed in front of the white fighter's uh, wing line. Not a bad, not a good maneuver. You can see that it gave the white fighter a chance to get a snapshot off. Ooh, almost caught a wing on the ground there. Uh, pulling up to try to uh, take out some of the angles. And it looks like they are both pulling back to neutral here. 180 out. And it looks like they're going, well, looks like one circle. Green Fighter delayed a little bit. Dropped his nose. We'll have to see how this works out here. Uh, for some reason, he's, he delayed in pulling in towards the circle see how this works out it doesn't look good for him yeah yeah okay same fight green fighter perspective two circle ah, he dropped a flare there not sure that was probably by mistake but could have been an effort to distract the white fighter Hey, again, just a reminder, the opposing fighter is always going to be at the center of the screen. Kind of hard to see him there. And it looks like the green fighter is making a valiant effort to take out whatever turning room. Uh, the white fighter won the race, but not by much. But then the green fighter is, is uh, kind of, well, he's got, well, there is vectors out in front of the white fighter again. But he's pulling up now. He's got it uh, again. Look where the, the vector is. Out in front of the uh, white fighter. So it's no surprise here that the white fighter has an advantage. Again, he's uh, above the green fighter on this. Or he's behind the 3-9 line of the green fighter. Green fighter is doing a lot of auto plane maneuvering here. Uh, not as careful with his uh, lift vector placement as the white fighter. And again, um, kind of pointing his nose out in front of the white fighter. In plane there for a snapshot. Trying to do the same thing he did before, which is uh, kind of pull under and get the white fighter to shoot out in front. Didn't work quite so well this time. I think the white fighter is kind of a little bit wise to that, but it did work a little bit. He's out there in front now of the uh, green fighter, so let's see if he takes advantage of it. It looks like the uh, the white fighter's escape is to go into that two-circle uh, Luffberry, which is where we find ourselves now. And this goes around two or three times. We'll see it. And we'll just watch this speed here. The uh, Right now, the uh, both fighters are at corner speed. In fact, the green fighter right now, is, uh, he was at 260 there for a while. He's back around 245 now. And uh, they look pretty neutral. Maybe the green fighter looks a little bit ahead here. It's hard to tell. Pretty neutral maybe. But he's uh, he's he's holding on to that corner speed, corner speed pretty well. He's at 360, 350 now. And it looks like both fighters are pretty neutral. Let's we'll see what happens here. You know, it could be, uh, I mean, right now the, the circles appear to be pretty concentric. So we're, we're kind of going around almost in a pure Luffberry. But I think uh, the white fighter is the first one to take advantage of cutting, uh, of getting ahead, and it looks like the white fighter has definitely got the advantage now. And we'll see, but the uh, 
he's still around. Oh, the problem is he's fast. He's at 400 knots. His circle is so big that the uh, white fighter can take advantage of it, even at corner speed. And uh, the good news about being fast is that uh, if you don't if you don't pull enough, if you don't expend enough uh, knots to angles, you won't get the shot. And he didn't get the shot, so he tried to maintain his quarter speed, i.e., the, the white fighter did, and the green fighter was just too fast, just out, out uh, outrated him. But he's still at 400 knots, so he's rating pretty fast. He's got a pretty big radius which again gives the white fighter another chance at coming across the circle, almost uh, giving him room to shoot. Uh, a briefly uh, a shot. Uh, speed's dropped off to, uh, he's now less than about 150 knots, the green fighter is, trying to get behind the, uh, the white fighter. But the white fighter pulls harder, uh, turns a lot of that airspeed into altitude, so he's got potential energy sitting up there above the green fighter. And he's just waiting to find out what the green fighter does. And then he just uh, drops down. And uh, looks like the uh, in order to get airspeed back, he had to. Uh, here it comes. Oop. There's that first missile. And uh, good use of flares saves the day. Um, and then he flies out in front. He, he went for that shot hoping he'd get it, but the end result is he flew out, but the green fighter's down to about 170, not down to 160 at one point, so he's not, doesn't have much control over his nose, and uh, the white fighter just pushes away from the nose, trying to stay away from him, uh, jets back and goes into a, I think he uh, goes into another Lovebird, he's ahead of the wing line, enough that he thinks he can I don't know what he does here does he did do, this is the vertical maneuver anyways the green fighter is struggling he's down around 200 knots 220 knots trying to get uh, enough speed to get his nose back on the uh, white fighter but the uh, white fighter is back probably at corner speed green fighters down around well he's up to 260 270 now and He's trying to get that nose around to get a shot on him, but the white fighter is going to be rating, uh, rating around too high a speed. So uh, doesn't quite make it. So he's back now to trying to get speed back. He's up around 330 now, green fighter is. And uh, he's back into that kind of neutral Luffberry situation. And let's uh, see, he's down around 336. 330, 320. He's expending uh, knots for angles to try to get a shot off. And he almost got it, but not quite enough. Now, the white fighter knows that the uh, green fighter is out of energy, so he's just going to go in the vertical, watching his nose, making sure that he's always pulling towards the uh, green fighter 6 o'clock. The, uh, the uh, green fighter is uh, about 100, less than 100 knots now. So the white fighter knows he's a grape, and he's and the green fighter's got to dive down to get knots. Uh, white fighter knows where he's going, uh, knows that he's uh, um, going to have a chance here. Green fighter reverses out in front. Now he would have been better, I think, if he had uh, continued on around to try to get back into a Luffberry. Uh, but ooh, almost uh, scraped a missile off on the dirt. Um, and now he's trying to come back. He's got a vector placement right now behind the uh, white fighter, but it's just doesn't have the energy in his. But he gets it almost to neutral here, which is good. It's just that he's like a hundred. Uh, he was almost about 180 knots, and uh, he just tries to dive down instead of going around the Luffberry circle. He reverses in front of the wing line, giving the white fighter all kinds of turning room, and. Uh, We'll end up seeing the result here. Here it comes. Boom. Okay, this is the uh, fourth and final fight of the uh, similars. Again, this is a two-circle. Uh, both fighters going low. Green fighter going even lower. Still two-circle fight. Nose low. 
The green fighter, yeah, or white fighter, is a, is over 400 knots right now, making a big circle. Uh, good 180 pass. Uh, vir virtually no turning room available for either fighter. And looks like they reversed to another two circle. And they're pulling. And the white fighter's trying to take advantage of, of some turning room here. Green fighter negates a lot of it by coming up to meet him. And they end up getting in, looks like a, kind of a rolling scissors here. Yeah, this is definitely a rolling scissors initially. And for, uh, vector placement in these is really important. And look at the speed brakes coming out on the white fighter. And where does the nose go? Where is the nose? The nose is high now. He's trying to get behind the green fighter. The green fighter allows his nose to drop. And that puts him out in front of the uh, white fighter's 3-9 line. And we'll see, uh, probably get a snapshot off here. Sure enough, and he catches him. Good fight. Okay, this is the uh, same fight, green perspective, two circle. And I think the green fighter does a pretty good job of nullifying the turning room that the white fighter is trying to develop here. If you notice, the green fighter goes uh, lower than the white fighter. So the white fighter is trying to get some vertical turning room here by hanging higher. The green fighter sees it and brings his nose up to meet the white fighter and sort of neutralizes it. Both have about the same amount of turning room. I thought this was a two circle and it is kind of because the, the uh, initially the green fighter had his vector out behind the white fighter but he pulls it up into kind of a one circle fight and it ends up being in a kind of a rolling scissors neutral situation <coughs> where both fighters are trying to get behind. Now look at his, his lift vectors out in front of the white fighter behind it now. The white fighter is definitely behind. Greed fighter uh, kind of looks like, I don't know if he lost sight there or not. Ooh, almost hit each other. But he keeps his nose low. He's got his speed brakes out as well too, but he had his nose low a little bit too long and uh, ended up uh, flying out in front of the white fighter's 3-9 line. And he doesn't, no out of play maneuver here, just accepts it. Could have done, uh, could have gone on a wing or gone on a wing and pulled to get out of it, but didn't. Okay, we're now going to switch to the dissimilar fight with the A4. This will be the first of four. Uh, this is the uh, F5. And it'll look like a one circle fight, starting out pretty level. A4 are now going a little bit low, probably pulling hard, trying to get inside the uh, F5, reversing uh, and taking a quick shot. Now, again, just a reminder, the opposing fighter is always going to be at the center of the screen. Um, F5's knots are down to about 240 now, 230, and... Uh, and now increasing back to 40, trying to get back to uh, a higher speed so we can raid around with the A4. Now, the A4 must have expended energy trying to get that shot off. So uh, that's why he's over there trying to gain tank speed again. Um, and there's a little bit of turning room that uh, it, he left for the F5, and the F5 is going to try to take advantage of it. Now look at his lift vector is out in front of the A4 or at least at the A4 anyways. And he's just trying to get behind the A4. And then uh, A4 is a slippery dude there. And now his ve lift vector is behind the A4. A little bit of a uh, barrel roll there to try to get behind in the line. Uh, A4 trying to spit him out. 
F5 trying to get slow. A4 doing out of plane maneuvers to stay away from the gun. F5 is just trying not to fly out in front of the A4, trying to keep sight of him down below him. A4 flies out in front, not a good thing here. I try to out of plane maneuver, but uh, too late with the flares. Okay, this will be uh, the same fight now from the A4's perspective. This is one circle. And his speed now is about 310, which is a good corner speed for the A4. About 300 now. He's pulling a little bit inside, using a little bit, a few knots for angles. Getting his nose up. He's now down around 240, 230 to get the shot off. And is he goes uh, a little bit below 200 now. Uh, and now he's going to have to get his nose down. He's down to about 160, one, actually 180. 190, getting his nose back down to pick up some more knots. Uh, and again, the A4 is at the, or excuse me, the F5 is at the center of the screen there in the distance, kind of hard to see. A4 is uh, back to about, well, he's 250. He's trying to rate around, but he's uh, bleeding uh, angles, to trying to get another shot, or at least get around behind the F5. Now the F5 is making use of some of the angles that were, or some of the turning room that was available vertically above the A4. And uh, now he's just trying to get behind the A4. A4 is just trying to um, do out of plane maneuvers to get behind the F5. Looks like he does a pretty good job of, of making this kind of a neutral fight for a while here. But he's down to about, he's 250. That maneuver in order to get out of the guns, put him, now he keeps, uh, that's a good maneuver. Uh, he's trying to get the, trying to spit the F5 out, but the F5 is staying high. Not having anything to do with that. A4 is uh, about 240 now. F5 is slower than that. But it's, so it spits him out in front. He realizes he's in missile range, so he puts some flares out. And here it comes, a little bit too late. Okay, this is uh, fight number two. F5, A4, dissimilar. And this will be two circle. A4 going pretty nose low. F5 uh, a little nose low. Probably planning on turning this into some turning room if the A4 allows it. A4 looks like he may have his nose back on the F5. Pretty close to it. But didn't take a shot. Uh, F5 is uh, about 360 now. Good, good corner speed. Just raiding around. Trying to stay ahead of the A4's nose. A4 might be able to get his nose back on the F5 here. Yep, sure enough. Fires off a missile, but the I think the crossing rate was too great. I'm not sure he even got a got a good missile lock. Okay, the F5 is doing that vertical maneuver again, uh, kind of an overshoot, barrel roll, high yo-yo kind of thing. Hanging up there, waiting for the A4 to move out from underneath. Coming down now. Letting the A4 fly out in front of it. Trying to get a shot here. Ooh, almost several shots. All misses. Good out of plane maneuvering by the A4. Ooh, the A4 shot off a missile at him as he passed. Gutsy maneuver. Okay, the F5 is in burner, though. I'm not sure why. He should be at idle here. Okay. All right, so... Obviously, they're going too close to the ground, so they're going into a... Uh, looks like a two-circle Lufberry kind of fight here. Let's see how this turns out. F5 is about 300 knots now. Almost looks like he's uh, 
trying to uh, yeah, good solid Luffberry here about 333 knots F5 is a little slower than he, uh, he would be in the F5 fight he's down around 325 which is the A4's corner speed so he's He's slower than he really wants to be, the F5 is. He'd be rating around a little better, although he is making a few angles on the A4. It looks like he's getting uh, a little bit of an advantage here. Now, he's expended some, uh, some knots for some angles here. He's down around 290 now. Looks like he's going to try to get some shots off. Yeah, a bunch of them. Oh, misses, unfortunately. Ooh, he reverses in front of him, does some out-of-plane maneuvering. Trying to get the F5 to out to shoot out in front of him. F5 gets his nose up to try to minimize any turning room the A4 could have gained. And ooh, tried to get a snapshot. Both fighters are real slow. F5 was down around 120 knots, dumping the nose to get uh, get some airspeed, but doesn't want to fly out too far in front. And so at about 2:30, he's pulling back up into the A4. He's still out in front. A4 probably will get a snapshot off. No hits, fortunately, for the F5. Okay, it looks like they reverse to a one circle. A4 stays low. F5 is going high here, trying to develop some turning room. And looks like the F5, uh, ooh, looks like he may have lost sight here. Yep, he's lost sight. Not good. Checking around, looking. Oop, looks like he picked him up. He's pulling back into the fight. Yeah, it looks like a head-on pass here. Yeah, both shooting at each other. Okay, uh, he at least neutralized that lost sight situation. That could very, very easily been a loss for the F5 if... Uh, he had regained sight there. I guess he didn't like it. He's using uh, he's using airspeed to to make angles here to try to get another shot quick here. Doesn't waste one of his missiles. Almost another uh, 180. They go one circle here. F5 pulls again high. A4. I don't know what his airspeed is, but he may be s slow. F5 is up around 220 now. Just uh, turning airspeed into altitude to try to stay above. Does a nice uh, displacement roll and gets on the A4 6 o'clock, putting the A4 in a really bad situation here. A4 is, uh, oops, must not have had a good lock. That was more uh, uh, bad lock rather than flare work. And obviously uh, got another shot off and killed, made the kill. Okay, same flight, A4 perspective. Two circle. Uh, A4 going low. F5 going low also, but not as low. Trying to develop some turning room between the two, uh, two fighters. A4 is trying to get his nose up to see if he can get a shot off. Too much crossing angle, maybe not enough of a tone. Uh, he got down to around uh, 270, so he didn't lose too much on that. Like I said, A4 can raid around and make angles on an F5, um, even in a one circle, at his corner speed, at the A4's corner speed. So, But he's now back to, he's down to about 220, trying to get his nose around. Took a shot, probably uh, not a very good solid tone because the missile went awry long before flares were used, so just not a good good use of the missile. Uh, now he's just dropping the nose to try to get back to corner speed. Now the this is where the F5 goes high, and uh, he's just hanging up there. It looks like the A4 does try to get his nose up to try to take out that turning room. And pretty effective in doing that actually but still uh, he's out in front of him but he's slow and the F5 just gets right in with him there Ooh, there was the missile shot trying to get him 
F5 reverses and tries to come back at the A4. Get, look where the vector is. He's trying to get behind the A4. And again, uh, close to the ground, so they're going to go back into their little Luftberry maneuver here. Let's see if the A4 gets back. A4 is already close to corner speed. He's about, well, he's 240, so he's still slow. Never really got back to that uh, 290 that he needs to get to. You can always tell the A4 is slow when those slats come out. They usually come out somewhere around 250. He's up around 290 now, so he's at a he's got a good corner speed. Slow end of the uh, A4's corner speed, but it looks like the F5 is uh, has rated around. I think this is where he was going for some angles. It's hard to tell. Can't remember exactly, but. The uh, A4 has uh, is slowed down a little bit. He's down around 240 now. Lost about 50 knots. Still about 240. Starting to accelerate a little bit. Still at 240. F5 is able to come around here. He's very slow. Worried about a missile. F5 closes in. Tries to get some. I'm sure he shoots here. Yep, there it is, coming around. Uh, and this is where he does that out of play maneuvering. Probably lost sight of the F5, just trying to force. Probably, I don't know if he's got his speed brakes out. I don't know if he didn't look like he has speed brakes out. Trying to get behind the F5. Picks him up again, realizes he's done fairly good, but still out in front. No chance for a shot there. I'm sure why the F5. Now, the A4 is down around 160 knots. And turns back into the fight with about 150 knots, whereas the uh, F5 at this point has a little over 200, about 220. And uh, A4 doesn't have enough energy to get his nose back to get a good shot. Now he's uh, A4 is about uh, about 200 knots right now, and trying to get his nose up to take out turning room. F5 doesn't want to give it up, so he just stays high. Uh, now, the A4 has to dump his nose again. He's uh, about 200 knots now. So he's trying to get uh, knots back up, so he uh, comes back left. A4, F5 is still high. Oh, that's where he lost sight. Yeah, if that's why he got so far up there. Got allowed the A4 to get back in the fight. Fortunately for the F5, he uh, regained sight and enough time to get his nose back on him. But it ended up being a, a really risky maneuver, putting your nose on the guy. And they exchanged some bullets. Nobody got any hits, though, it looks like. A4 is back at corner speed, about 296, almost 300. Worried about the F5 because the F5 came around. If you remember, he used all the, the, those knots to get uh, get that uh, that shot off but too high now the a4 is about 220 it's got some knots to come up but not as many not as much as the f5 the f5 just gets up there and hangs up there very slow f5 or a4 is about uh, 220 now and I think trying to get into that two circle fight realizing that the f5 has the advantage now. So all he can do is kind of raid around, and uh, uh, he's in a hurt circle. There's the first missile that went awry, and there's the second missile that won the fight. Okay, this is the third fight. F5A4, two circle, I think. Yep, uh, two circle, A4 going low, F5 raiding around to the right. F5 at about, uh, eh, he's about uh, a little on the slow side of a good uh, corner speed, about 330. Now he's back, he's at 350. So he's good corner speed rating around. F A4 is not going to be able to get his nose on the F5. And uh, if he tries, he's going to burn a lot of energy. I think he's just trying to rate around. We'll see. And again, remember the opponent's at the uh, center of the screen. That's where he's always going to be. 
it's now uh, over water. Coming around, it looks like the A4 has the advantage, but he just doesn't have the energy to get his nose up and around. The F5 just uh, keeps pulling around. Now he can, uh, he's he's used a few, uh, well, he's back to 340, 350. Good corner speed for the F5, good maintenance. A4 is doing pretty good too as well. Looks F5 is trying to make a maneuver here. Look, where's his lift vector? The vector is behind the A4. And doesn't look like he's pulling towards the A4 now. Looks like he, uh, I think maybe he's uh, lost sight here. Because he's not pulling. Looks like he's lost sight. A4 is, oh, getting in, uh, in position now. A4, yeah, bad for the F5 here. He, uh. Lost sight, so he's trying to make a run for it. Dumping flares and increasing his airspeed, and ain't gonna work. Boom. Uh, that's what they say lose sight, lose the fight. Okay, same fight from the A4 perspective. Two circle, A4 going low. Lift vector on the F5. I'd almost have it out in front at this point, trying to catch up just like that. That's what he's doing now. Trying to align fuselages. Doesn't want to go too nose low, otherwise he'll have he'll give away too much turning room. But this is actually a pretty good, uh, pretty good turn here. And he's at 290, so his minimum turn, minimum corner speed, actually pretty good here. I think both fighters are maintaining corner speed pretty well. Now the A4 is using knots to get his nose up. Didn't have enough to do it. The, A, the F5 was just raiding around uh, too good, and uh, the A4 lost a lot of knots. Now he's having to dump his nose to get back to corner speed. Got as slow as about 240, 230. Now he's back around 260 again, coming up 270, 280, and back to 290 here. And a little over 300 now. This is where the uh, F5 goes into that vertical maneuver. And this is where I think the F5 loses sight. A4 is doing exactly what he's supposed to do, which is uh, don't give up that turning room. Just come up to meet it. And the AF5 unfortunately loses sight, and the A4 is right in position to take advantage. And on an inadvertently flies right out in front of the A4. A4 just bides his time, gets a steady lock, and fires off a missile. Boom. Fight's over. Okay, this is the uh, final fight of the movie. F5, A4, dissimilar. And it's a two-circle fight. A4 going low, F5 going low, and again, not as low as the A4. A4 is uh, in a nice, good two-circle fight here. And it looks like he had to uh, dump the nose to get airspeed back again. A4 is uh, going to stay high. Oop, they shot off a missile. Just too much of a crossing rate. I doubt he probably had much of a lock there. I didn't see many flares. Um, the F5 now is about 270, so he's well below corner speed for himself, which is why I think the A4 is in such a good position at this point. F5 is dumping the nose to try to get to a corner speed, and he's pretty much there now. He's got 330, there's 340, he's back to corner speed. All right, and A4 looks like a good uh, two circle Luffberry kind of fight. Uh, down, to the, down to the ground. A4 
and F5 is at 370 rating around We'll see how that works. Probably making a pretty big circle. 380. Three, almost 390 here. Making lots of knots. Starting up maybe in order to get rid of some of there. He's down around 300 now. He's trying to make some knots. Or some angles with those knots. Uh, 300 knots right now. So he's he dropped a lot of airspeed. 80 knots real quick. Okay, he's uh, F5 is relaxing. G, he's back to about 320 now. Let's see what happens. Oh, F5 is pulling into the vertical. This will be interesting to see what happens. A4 is countering by going into the vertical. Uh, F5 is around 200 knots, so he's slow, but it looks like the A4 is almost hanging in the sky there. Uh, I'm not sure he's uh, going to be doing much here. Kind of a grape. Oop, there, and lost the fight. Okay. Okay, this is uh, the final flight, A4 perspective. Uh, I'm going to let you uh, take a look at this fight and decide for your, and just see where the, uh, the A4 went wrong, because I thought it was a pretty good fight up until that last Luffberry circle. Now the A4's got his vector out in front, and that's probably smart because he's trying to make angles here. And he's able to do that even at corner speed. Well, yeah, he's 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 a little higher than corner speed here. He's uh, almost at 400 knots. And I guess he's expending that to try to get the nose up there to get a missile off. And yeah, I don't think he had much of a lock there, to be honest with you. Missile went haywire even with no flares. But he's only, he only, uh, he only got down to about 280, 270 maybe. And he's already uh, back above almost 300 here. So he's back at corner speed, rating around like he should. Vector out in front because he's trying to align fuselages here. Two circle fight. Kind of a good neutral pass. Neither one of them could take advantage of any turning room. Good, solid, Luffberry two-circle fight. Uh, he's down around 300 knots, so, that, I mean, that's perfect corner speed for uh, what's going on here. He could, he could go be a little bit faster, but, yeah, he's close to, he got up to about 320 there for a while. He's now back around uh, 300. And they raid around. He's back. Uh, he's down around 270 now. Trying to, there's 290. So he's back to minimum corner speed, which is not bad. Now, a little slower now. Not sure why he's using those flares. Shouldn't waste flares. And he's getting pretty slow here. I'm not sure why he's doing that. And so at, he's about 210 knots when he pulls up to meet the, uh, the F5. And now he's, uh, he's less than 100 knots now. And F5 is in the sun. No wonder he didn't see him coming. Good use of sun, probably inadvertent on the part of the F5. And there's the kill.